Good afternoon. I open hearing number 20 of 183 period of sessions of the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights that is called Situation of Access to Sexual and Reproductive Education of Girls, Boys and Adolescents in Ecuador that has been requested by a series of civil society organizations. I am Julissa Mantilla Falcon, president of the Inter-American Commission and I'm uh, joined by Commissioner Estuardo Rolón, country reporter, Commissioner Margaret May McCauley, and Commissioner uh, Esmeralda Rosemena de Troitinho. I would like to greet the representatives of the state and the civil society, and especially Mrs. Petit Alvarazin. It's an honor for us to see you here. First of all, I would like to tell you that the civil society will have 20 minutes, then the state will have 20 minutes, the Inter-American Commission will take the floor for 20 minutes, and then we have a second round of 12 minutes for each party. We have a digital time, a timer, and we have simultaneous interpretation and captions, and these uh, hearings are broadcasted and the uh, recording will be uploaded to the uh, channel of the commission. I would like to put emphasis on the uh, on this hearing is very symbolic, the last one of the period of session. And as you will see now, we have the participation of adolescents. That's very important to us in the Inter-American Commission to listen to you. Having said that, the civil society has the floor for 20 minutes. Good morning to everyone. I am Noelia, I am part of the Movimiento por Ser Niñas, a collective of the civil society that advocates against gender violence through the defense of our rights and education. Girls and adolescents have learned that we cannot discuss or give our opinion. That is why we should be empowered so that all tools are guaranteed to change these so that we can be the protagonists of our stories. I would like to remind you that Ecuador is the second country in Latin America with the highest rate of uh, pregnancy in adolescents. It is important to take into account that this is the engine and the cause of um, forced child um, marriage. This is uh, something cruel and this issue affects girls in uh, conditions of poverty. If any of them continues, decides not to continue with the pregnancy, it is criminalized by society. Since the movement started, we have insisted on the fact that self um, knowledge about our bodies should be a priority so that we can identify and respond to sexual violence so that we can prevent teenage pregnancy. That is why we should speak freely about sexuality without taboos in our families or schools. Media outlets and the society need to change urgently messages transmitted to us, giving the idea that we are uh, guilty of, sexual, of the sexual violence that we suffer and all sectors should work for this elimination. Girls and adolescents demand comprehensive sexuality education to make informed decisions about our lives, our sexualities, and our bodies. Violence against us and the lack of warranties of our rights cannot continue to be something that occurs on a daily basis. The state has a historical debt with us. We that are here in this press and the, the girls that we represent, the girls who are not here and with such as Paola and all girls and adolescents in Ecuador, we have the right to live free of violence, fulfill our life goals, defend our autonomy. We have the right to be mothers, to decide whether we want to be mothers or not, but we have the right to be happy. Dear commissioners, after this hearing, we will give you a letter that the girls wrote and we have gathered all our demands in that letter. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Claudia. I am part of the Coalición Nuestras Voces. We are here today because for many years, girls and young women have 
been silenced. They made us believe that taking control of our lives and deciding on our bodies is wrong. In Ecuador, getting information is a privilege because our families in institutions and in the society in general, we do not have information that is free of bias or religious content. Our parents, our teachers are not comfortable talking about sexual um, relationships. The lack of education and knowledge make us think about uh, myths and practices. For example, that in our first a sexual encounter, we should not use a condom because there is no risk of pregnancy. This shows we lack the tools to exercise our sexual and reproductive rights. Young girls and women want to access information to know and low love our bodies that are valuable as each one of us. It is also necessary for us to freely access to uh, contraceptive measures of good quality and modern to prevent pregnancy, STDs and HIV. We want not to be judged to, for taking uh, initiative and use condom in sexual encounters because we participate in sexual relations. We have a voice, a body and decisions that should be respected. The uh, staff that is part of the medical centers and should be trained aimed at informing us about our sexuality, contraceptive methods, pregnancies, and any kind of treatments without judging us and without demanding the presence of an adult, because this would allow us to know in an efficient way about the different ways in we can take care of us so that no one can exercise violence against us and prevent pregnancies in girls and adolescents. Thus, we demand that the state increases the budget for our health and education because with, S, with CSE, we are empowered. With a just law and a responsible state, we are free and we raise our voices in this protest demanding for our rights. Today, we are not hysteric, we are historical. And together, we are going to change that. Good afternoon. I am Maoli. And I have to say that in Ecuador, seven girls under the age of 14 years old give birth every day. Most cases are cases of sexual violence. But these cases are uh, have impunity because the uh, state protects the aggressor and protection our homes has not been developed and that also occurred in the different systems of education and health in all over the country that is the case of paola guzman alvaracin she's not here present to tell her story but we are here to do that we need the state as a whole to be committed to us so there is a specialized trained and sensitive um officials to deal with uh, sexual violence against girls. It is fundamental that they have the knowledge and the empathy to deal with this case, to respond in an assertive and positive way without re-victimizing them. We need processes of reparations for all the survivors because we need to recall that their health their mental health is also affected af after suffering violence. The clearest answer is comprehensive sexuality education that allows the, us to identify violence uh, based on, on sexuality. This allows us to discover and value our sexuality. It is also a tool that should be granted to boys, girls, and adolescents in order to eliminate gender stereotypes and know that nothing justifies violence. We are here today because we are tired of facing gender-based violence in every space. We are tired of the fact that our rights are not respected, of the state ignoring all our efforts to let them know what's destroying our lives. But we will not get 
tired of demanding odd what is owed to us, what is entitled to us, so that all the girls in my country have lives free, lives free of violence. Good afternoon, members of the commissioners. My name is Petita Barracin, mother of Paola Guzman. In August 14, 2020, the court issued a decision and recognized her as a victim. That decision was granted by a justice that was denied by me in Ecuador. That's why we had to go through this path of seeking justice for 18 years, supported by the Centro de Derechos Reproductivos. If my daughter had the education and the tools in terms of sexual education, she wouldn't be re-victimized. And now Paola would be with me. Today, I just remember her as a girl full of dreams and aspirations, a happy girl. And that decision was historical in Ecuador, which still owes a huge debt. The country needs to guarantee comprehensive sexuality education for girls and adolescents so that they have real figure statistics regarding sexual abuse in the educational system for professors to uh, denounce these abuses. As mother of a victim of sexual violence that seeks justice for years, it is very important for me and my family for the civil society and my representatives to keep on monitoring the implementation of the decision. Thus, we can have a country in which there are no girls and adolescents going through what Paola went through. Thank you. My name is Valeska Chiriboga, and I'm speaking today as member of CEPAM Guayaquil. In this space, we would like to remind the state and the society there are many elements pending for the implementation of the decision. Ecuador has fulfilled with uh, reparations established by court, but there are non-repetition measures that are not comply with, especially that, that makes reference to the fact that the state will adopt measures to deal with sexual violence in the uh, educational institutions. In Ecuador, there's a general context of violence, sexual violence in institutions and impunity. Although the state has published statistics regarding trained uh, professors, we consider Ecuador should provide information regarding uh, training for the prevention of these uh, um, events. So that there is a constant dialogue, the implementation of non-repetition remedies constitutes processes of control and visibility in the long term. We hope the state can recognize the scope and the expertise of the civil society, especially in the interinstitutional table for the uh, promotion of the strategy to eradicate violence in, in educational institutions. This requires a comprehensive modification of the system. As civil society, our role is of permanent monitoring. The representatives of the CATE created the observatory Paola Guzman Albarracin to guarantee the fulfillment of the decision and a, a comprehensive sexuality education and a life free of violence. Thus, we will guarantee that no other adolescent will leave what Paola went through. Thank you. I am Tania Maldonado. The state of Ecuador is in debt with girls and adolescents in the country. In the uh, school, we learn about hate, which um, spreads uh, hate against the LGBTI uh, community. 
they told us that abstinence was the best contraceptive method, that the um, pills that we take today after a sexual encounter cause an abortion. When I was 14, the former president of Korea said that adolescents should not access uh, any pills because it was promiscuous. In two years, the pregnancy rate decreased and the Plan Familia um, was created and it was managed by the Opus Dei. Many adolescents were forced into teenage pregnancy. Many were um, suffering sexual violence on a daily basis. My one professor uh, in, in school raped one of my uh, friends on a daily basis. One friend also decided to die because uh, she didn't want to take a contraceptive uh, pill and she didn't want to continue with the pregnancy. We all live with violence from our partners. Many have lost their lives and this should change. Comprehensive, comprehensive sexuality education saves lives. It's the responsibility of the state to guarantee intersectional approaches, to guarantee CSE with a human rights approach. This will not occur without political will and financing. I am here today to demand sexuality education with consent for us to enjoy with clear, free and timely education for us in indigenous language, sign language, to guarantee quality CSE is a non-repetition measurement that it is necessary after the torture we have gone through, the state denies essential basic rights for our lives. Good afternoon, I'm Catalina Martinez Doral from the Center of Reproductive Rights. After hearing the voices of the girls, adolescents and young women and uh, Mrs. Petit Albarracin, who is raising her voice for Paola, Paola, I share with the commission, the state of Ecuador and the people present here today that there is a need, a very important need to guarantee CSC in all curriculum, all the, the whole curriculum of Ecuador. And to remind you that this education must be free, non-discriminatory, evidence-based, scientifically rigorous and to be appropriate uh, to age. This education has to be uh, appropriate to facilitate the uh, consequences of affective and sexual relationships, particularly with a focus on consent and liberties in relation to sexual and reproductive rights. It should include self-knowledge and self-care uh, of the bodies and that must foster the empowerment of girls in relation to their sexual and reproductive uh, rights and uh, lifting stereotypes to allow for uh, different methods of contraception. It should also apply uh, acceptability and to guarantee sex education uh, in different languages such as indigenous languages, Braille and sign languages, and it should be extended to families so that they do not stigmatize sexuality at home. And finally, and the most important thing is that girls and organized movement of girls and adolescents be in, included in the discussion, design and drafting of policies and, and activities related to comprehensive sex education, not only by hearing them, but also by uh, complying with their request and to uh, giving them a prominent role. Good afternoon, I'm Paulina Ponzi from Planned Parenthood Global. I will share our conclusion in our petition. The, despite the formal recognition as of sexual education as a, a comprehensive right and the recommendations by the state, the girls and adolescents of our country do not have accessible uh, mechanisms and information that allow them to prevent 
pregnancies and uh, sickness. This has a very important impact on their health. And so we respectfully ask that first, the commission recommends the Ecuadorian state the revision of its regulations related to sexual education and to adapt them to the international standards established by the different international human rights bodies, and especially by the Inter-American Court of Human Rights, among other bodies. Second, to establish that the Ecuadorian state must have at least one priority policy that is long to the long term that guarantees uh, comprehensive sex education. Third, to recommend the Ecuadorian state to guarantee the access to CSE by changes in the curricula to train the professors and uh, providing training on prevention of sexual based violence and justice to assist forced pregnancies. Also to guarantee all rights of sexual, sexual and reproductive rights, including emergency bills and access to abortion in conformity with international uh, bodies. Fifth, this commission should pronounce itself and reject the veto that the president of Ecuador has imposed on the law on abortion, such as which uh, provides some requirements. And due to the lack of sex education, many girls are forced to be mothers, even being under 14 because the state is not guaranteeing the minimum rights they are entitled to and seeks to promote a space to monitor the recommendations from this hearing thank you very much thank you very much to the civil society i give the floor to the state Thank you very much, Madam President of the Inter-American Commission on Human Rights, uh, Commissioner Julissa Mantilla. I'm, uh, it's a pleasure for me to have this opportunity to express that this period of sessions has had the most of the biggest of successes. I greet also the rest of the members of the board, my, my dear sister, uh, Commissioner May McCauley, Commissioner Arosemena, and our dear Commissioner Eduardo Rallon, the uh, Special Rapporteur Salada Garcia, and the different representatives of the uh, Plan Internacional Ecuador, the Center to Support Human Rights, the Ecuadorian State to Promote uh, Women in Guayaquil, and the Center of uh, reproductive uh, rights and Planned Parenthood. I'm honored to greet especially Mrs. Uh, Petit Albarracin on behalf of the Ecuadorian state. I want to thank you for convening this hearing and after the dialogue to do today, we hope that we take away recommendations on this topic that deserves the special attention of the authorities of my country. With this introduction, I wanted to now give the floor to the Ecuadorian delegation participating today. We have today the representatives of several different institutions, the uh, Felipe Ochoa, uh, Claudia Malaseca, the director of uh, promotion of human rights uh, and Andrea Romo, the director of uh, in comprehensive reparation. On behalf of the Ministry of Education, we have Castellano Vela, the Under Secretary Edgar Roberto Acosta Andrade, and Camila Alejandra Vandas Agapelo, an analyst for a democracy and well-being and representing the uh, general attorney's office we have our dear friend maria fernanda fernanda alvarez carlos espina 
and Maria Fernanda Narvaez, a lawyer on the matters of human rights. And finally, uh, on behalf of the foreign ministry, we have uh, Under Secretary Amelia Asanza, which is an expert on the inter-American system. I will give the floor to the Under Secretary for uh, the representative of the Ministry of Education who will present uh, the arguments of the state in this part of the hearing joined by Felipe Ochoa. So uh, you have the floor, Diana, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. To start with this uh, participation, I want to personally thank, and on behalf of the Ministry of Education, I want to thank the Ecuadorian uh, organizations present today, and through them, Noelia, Claudia, Maolia, Petita, Tania, and Valesca for their important inputs. Both uh, you and us, we know that this has been a long way to arrive to this, which I'm going to present uh, uh, right now, and which will allow us to strengthen comprehensive sex education in Ecuador. I want to refer reference the international uh, document uh, published by UNESCO in 2018, which uh, provides uh, several recommendations based on different guidelines and recommendations made by different human rights bodies and uh, recommendations related to comprehensive sex education. This document ha has a goal to assist educational health uh, and other types of uh, professionals to draft comprehensive sex education materials in schools and outside schools. Among these guidelines, there are three special aspects that must be included in any education related to comprehensive sex education. The, the development of attitudes and activi activities before sexual and reproductive rights. All programs has to be uh, scientifically based and adapted to contexts. They should be drafted logically and gradually from uh, from the beginning of life to uh, the end of life. And finally, this education must be uh, human rights, uh, must have a human rights approach. And the Ministry of Education of Ecuador has developed concrete mechanisms to implement comprehensive sex education. First of all, the implementation of the opportunities in the curricula, which started in 2019 with the technical support of uh, UNESCO and UMPA in 2020. These are opportunities provided for um, teachers to foster knowledge and activities related to sexuality in the four uh, subjects that are basic to high schools in edu Ecuador. This allows us to plan and teachers can uh, provide the goals of se comprehensive sex education. For instance, for children between six and eight years old, we can eliminate gender-based stereotypes through an analysis of different factors uh, without taking into account uh, trends any specific trends. In this way, we advance in this learning for this age group and we learn about stereotypes. Using this guidance as a strategy to implement comprehensive sex education allows us to uh, have the strength of uh, teachers to implement different goals in teaching allows us to understand that sexuality and and, and these types of rights are uh, basic to the development of human lives. Also, we uh, leave aside the uh, an approach based on anatomy 
and we create motivations for the students in these subjects in order to achieve these goals what's most important is to continue progressing in training teachers in on the matters of uh, comprehensive sex education and for that in 2021 we uh, progressed with a um, mechanism to raise awareness and we provided training for 400 teachers for this year 2022 we have more than 7000 people who have been registered uh, for this uh, training courses and we will have a third instance for this course as well last year we uh, delivered different booklets in cooperation with other institutions. And we had the um, technical support of uh, UNESCO, who provided support to the Ministry of Education to provide digital tools related to comprehensive sex education. And with the aim to strengthen this type of training as the main strategy to prevent uh, teenage pregnancy and gender-based violence, the Ministry of Education wants to uh, carry out a plan to invest more than thousands of dollars to contribute to make comprehensive sex education a universal education to allow teenagers and adolescents to have uh, informed decisions regarding their sexuality. Especially in a country which has one of the highest rates of teenage pregnancies. We are planning specific actions that have been implemented over time. And the most important one is to prevent sexual violence and gender-based violence, which is a particip participatory activity uh, aimed, targeted to uh, high school student students. For 2021, we implemented this methodology and there were more than 11,000 students uh, who participated. And this was strengthened by the uh, support of different institutions which contributed to make this virtual course so that it could be implemented all throughout the country. And finally, since the amendment to the intercultural law was enforced, the Ministry of Education started building a national strategy to uh, implement comprehensive sex education, which will be strengthened by the different processes I mentioned and new me new processes that will come out of this uh, mechanism. This will be a particip participatory activity with the cooperation of uh, civil society entities from the state and especially with the support of children and adolescents all over the country with whom we have had an articulation so that this comprehensive sex education reaches all places in, in Ecuador. And thank you very much. Good afternoon to everyone, also to all the commissioners, members of the commission. I would like to greet all the civil society organizations and um, Mrs. Petit Albarracin, who is here in this thematic hearing. The Secretariat of uh, Human Rights, since the uh, decision, Paola Guzman uh, Barracin against uh, Ecuador in August 2020, uh, started with nine institutions. Uh, work table in order to implement decision, especially measure number 11, the state will identify and implement measures to prevent sexual violence in education institutions in accordance with the comprehensive decision. Taking into account this uh, context, there have been 47 meetings 
and we can highlight the following. First of all, a general presentation of the work carried out within the comprehensive policy context in order to prevent and eradicate sexual violence in the education system. Review and follow up of progress made by nine institutions that make up this table in connection to the approach for the prevention and eradication of sexual violence in the education system, the uh, identification of uh, victims within the educational system, the before we continue, I would like to say that at the beginning, as when the decision was issued, this was made up by seven institutions. And when we took office in 2021, the national government and the inter-institutional table approved the inclusion of the MIES and also the uh, institution in charge of defending um, the rights of children and adolescents. Also, an institution that is part of the judicial branch. As uh, fourth point, the development of technical statistical uh, boards in order to determine the indicators to measure within the national strategy cases. So there is one system that allows the government to act timely. Also, there were two consultation processes regarding this public policy document through the um, institution that deals with this kind of uh, consultation processes. What are the results of this, the methodological guide for the design and implementation of a comprehensive guide for the prevention and eradication of sexual violence in the education system, the uh, elaboration of four programs uh, in compliance with measure number 11, a national strategy for the prevention and eradication of sexual violence uh, in the education system for 2021 to 2022, different training processes for public officials, um, the participation of an university to process the information to uh, get a diagnosis for the development of public policies, a regular meeting with the nine authorities of the institutions that make up this work table in order to prevent and eradicate violence in the education system. This was part of the official day of uh, the fight against violence in the classroom, a public tool that is a, a strategy for the eradication of sexual violence in the education institutions 2021-2025. Uh, we also consider the participation of the government, but also of public and private actors, civil society representatives, and the participation of boys, girls, and adolescents in the country through the National Council for Intergenerational Equality, the National Council for Gender Equality that guarantees policies have a gender approach, the Undersecretary for the Prevention and Punishment of Violence Against Girls, Boys, uh, and Adolescents, that is in charge of implementing the law for the eradication of violence against women that has been passed by the National Assembly. And in this regard, it's very important to bear in mind that the participation of girls, boys, and adolescents in this process, there have been 1,200 uh, boys, girls, and adolescents which have who have participated for the national strategy and there's a draft now, it's about to be completed. And this will allow us to launch the national strategy. And I will make reference to the request made by the civil society organizations and this uh, secretariat on behalf of the state takes down note 
of your demands. One of those taking into account the budget uh, to guarantee that the national government and the work uh, table in order to carry out the national strategy will have uh, the adequate budget to carry out different process for protection, access to justice for girls, boys and adolescents who are victims of uh, sexual abuse or violence in the education sector in connection with reparation and non-repetition 3500 boy girls and adolescents um, were heard by this institution and it's important to say that since january the representatives of the victims in case Paola Guzman de Barracin have been invited to this uh, work table and that deals especially with the uh, cases presented by CEPAM in order to have the expertise of civil society organizations so that this process includes uh, feedback from these organizations. In order to conclude, we would like to hear to the re response of the CEPAN and the Centros Sexuales y Reproductivos. And there is an invitation in order to carry out six workshops, uh, one for each national strategy, one for the political table with the authorities, the inter-institutional table, and a final workshop in order to conclude uh, this uh, national strategy. In these last seconds, I could like to express my gratitude and in the observatory, regarding the observatory, this is an important step for civil society organizations to exercise their role before the state. Thank you to the representatives of the state. Now I will give the floor to the Indian American Commission. First of all, I will ask Commissioner Rolon, country reporter, whether he has any comments or questions. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to greet all my colleagues, civil society organizations, especially Mrs. Petit Alvaracin, who is here today, and also the representatives of the state and also the ambassador, Carlos Jativa, who is present in this hearing. I have closely heard both presentations. Uh, it calls my attention regarding the last part of the report presented by the state, a series of actions related to public policies and state actions that have been detailed and I could like to make a comment and ask a question so that afterwards the civil society and the state can add further information. What are the mechanisms of communication that exist between the state and the civil society organizations in order to follow up this implementation or improvement of public policies? Is there a methodology? Is there a periodicity of the meetings? Any aspects that could be improved regarding that communication channels? So if you could tell us your viewpoint about how this works, how this methodology works, and if you have any idea about how to improve that. Thank you. I will now give the floor to Commissioner Esmeralda Rosemena, Rapporteur for Children's Rights. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to greet Petita. I have a special connection with her case with the mechanism of petitions and cases, 
we had to do carry out those first assessments regarding the request and i would like to share with you that pain which that is related to what paola went through i would like to especially acknowledge the adolescents that spoke today, Claudia, Maoli, Noelia. I don't know if I'm missing someone. I guess there were four. Tamia, yes. Tamia with an M. Listening to you, gives me great satisfaction because it's the voice of the girls and the boys. And in my opinion, that is the answer for the transformation. Everything they have pointed out. And if you listen to what they request, they are asking for education, health, a healthy life. They ask for happiness. They are asking for a right that should be guaranteed already, but they are asking for it due to the events that they have described. To the civil society that is here with them, I would like to acknowledge your commitment, your work, your effort. These are topics that sometimes we feel this has been overcome. It's been 32 years since the convention was approved. All the plans and programs, we say girls and boys first. We listen to governments to say that in their policies. But when we listen to the things that have to be done, we feel that that is going that is still in progress and that your voices and the follow-up the monitoring of the CS society highlight that this has not concluded to the authorities of the state I would like to greet you all. Thank you for participating in this hearing. This opportunity for the Inter-American Commission to listen to the position of the state. Although Paola's case and the girls have said that it's a voice that is not here today, but they are raising her voice on behalf of all the other girls. So it's very important to have this space. The ambassador, Carlos, I have to say, he is always deeply interested. I am aware of that. And there's also an interest of the state of Ecuador of discussing violence against children, against boys, girls, and adolescents, bearing in mind inter-American standards, he acknowledges that. But it seems that this is not an issue for these states. And in every state, there is violence against girls, boys, and adolescents. And we need to address that in a particular way. So in this opportunity, I'd like to highlight what the adolescents have said. They want education regarding human sexuality as a possibility, as a formula for its 
for their own protection, knowledge, training. After listening to the Secretariat of the Ministry of Education, I have a question for them. Whether these plans and programs regarding comprehensive sexual education are being other known by the adolescents. I believe that the girls are here today about a specific topic, but they have said that this knowledge should be for boys, for adolescents, being empowered with the protagonism of their lives. They are they taken into consideration in the preparation of what the education system has? To me, that participation is key. If adolescents are not included in this process, do you do they have the opportunity so that we can assess through them whether the education system is following up that program the program is very important but the follow-up and the implementation will be determined as positive or negative by the girls and boys that need to get the message. And finally, I agree with Commissioner Estuardo's uh, question. The institutionality that has been created, there are nine institutions. You should remember that comprehensive protection should encompass all institutions is the migrating mechanism included, taking into account what this means for a particular group of the society, taking into account the migrating situation in South America. And this question is to the girls. How do you assess What's the percentage of your participation? How do you assess your participation? Because the state has pointed out that through the National Council, that is part of the comprehensive protection system, you participate. But I would like to know whether girls and adolescents participate we have listened to them and we can say that they are ready to contribute with their vision, their stance, and we need to take advantage of that. Thank you, Madam President. And I'm sorry I have spoken so much. Don't worry for taking so much time. Um, Commissioner McCauley, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam President. Um, may I greet uh, all the representatives of, of the state and a very special greeting for His Excellency Ambassador Carlos, who, who we go back a long way, Esmeralda and myself and yourself, are the two longest serving commissioners, which makes this a historic uh, hearing, as the President mentioned before, because it's the only one in which we have the two longest serving commissioners and the entire board of the commission, at which has had not happened before. So it's very historic and it's a very good thing because this in this we're dealing with the future of all the states, but most especially and particularly and specifically the state of Ecuador. Um, I just wanted to make a couple of um, um, general comments um, first, uh, that knowledge is power. And, and oh yes, I do greet all, all the adolescents who spoke. And the um, Petita, I think her name is the bereaved mother. 
um, who lost her child. Um, and that is unimaginable pain. And I also greet um, all the, the state officials, of course, who are present. And my, my colleagues in the commission and my, the special rapporteur and um, so on. And I do greet particularly um, um, Maholi, who in my view is representing the Afro-descendant young people in this hearing, which um, they are so vulnerable, a vulnerable group and, and sometimes lack visibility completely. So I'm very happy that you're here, Maholi, to speak. Okay, and all of you have spoken and you've made it clear that knowledge is power and you recognize that mantra um, because without knowledge, your power has been taken away. This is why there are so many teenage pregnancies, not only in Ecuador, but around the world. Because once these institutions, the states take away the power of knowledge of sexual reproductive health matters and rights, you, your power is being curtailed and you are endangered because you, cannot, you don't even have the knowledge to recognize when a, a predator is grooming you for future sexual violations. And in addition, I I'm, I'm tend to, I'm, I'm, this one, this next subject, I'm very emotional about. States are not speaking out against and trying to curtail so-called child marriage. What is that? It is not a marriage because it's a contradiction in terms. Children cannot consent. And marriage needs full and, and clear consent. They do not even know when some of them, as the youngest eight or ten, are forced into these, these uh, um, marriages and so-called unions, what that entails. And to my mind, they're sentenced to a life of pedophilic practices being committed against them and frequent on a prepared early births being given by them to household duties they're not qualified for or know really how to perform, to violence and abuse, and to the curtailment of their future because their education is terminated. And so their future to have an opportunity to self-develop into independence is taken away from them. So all this has to change. And you are the ones, I was so happy hearing your voices today, that you are the ones who will push through this. But the state has to prove its good intentions by actually implementing all the plans we heard about today. And of course, the commission will continue to monitor all that the state has said that they would do. And I have to say this, the Ambassador Carlos, we will miss you from Ecuador's affairs because you are always accessible for dialogue and, and substantial dialogue. We could do with your assistance, continuing even though you're elsewhere in this matter. So I am not going to ask any specific question because I adopt what my, my sister Esmeralda and my brother um, Strado have said before me. And I leave it there. I encourage you to continue your work and send us information, any information that you have at all times. And we know Katerina, Catalina Martinez is there and her organization, superb and stalwart. So good luck with your work. Thank you. Thank you, commissioners. I would like my colleagues to. I, I, I'm sorry. Uh, I, what I wanted to say is that uh, if we could have three additional minutes, because I want to hear from the rapporteur as well. I had one specific question for the civil society, uh, specifically for Tamia, Noelia, Claudia, and Maoli. 
uh, beyond recognizing your bravery, um, what's the cost you're paying? And I'm referring to your families, your friends, the your schools, because you are here being very brave, but I'm convinced that not all of your family members or friends could are in agreement with you. So I want to know if you could tell us what's the family emotional cost in this struggle. I think that's very important. Secondly, this questions would be addressed to the state. On the one hand, beyond all you have been formed, and I have to uh, say this, the commission values your presence and the response you are given for such an important and difficult issue. Not all states address this. This is something that we value, but what are the policies related, for instance, to sexual violence perpetrated by teachers? What are the investigations that are opened or the sanctions? Uh, in some cases, in other states, the people who have record in sexual violence are moved to other institutions, for instance. So I want to know if uh, this type of things happen in Ecuador as well. The relationship between dropouts and forced pregnancies of girls and adolescents. The girls who become pregnant as a consequence of sexual violence actually use, usually drop out of school. So these, this is a consequence of not having a comprehensive access to education. So information is key here as Commissioner Arasamena mentioned. How are these initiatives, finally, these state initiatives related to comprehensive sex education, related to the veto, which was mentioned by petitioners, related to the interruption of pregnancy? If you don't have the information now, you can provide it in writing. And for these two minutes, I will give the floor to our reporter, Soledad Garcia. Thank you very much, Madam President. Good afternoon, commissioners. Good afternoon, the representatives of the state. Uh, greeting to uh, Ambassador Kalahativa, and I agree we will be missing him very much. And also a very warm greeting to the civil society and especially the mother of Paola. It's actually a pleasure, a privilege to be sharing this hearing with you. Uh, to be very brief, we had the opportunity to work with the commission on this case and when we were examining the case and when I was hearing Commissioner Arasemena, I uh, recall those, that time and we saw how the court's uh, sentence was useful for the state of Ecuador to strengthen only its regulatory framework, but also its strategies to address this problem. And also I want to, I was uh, remembering that um, some years ago, 2010, I could work with the special rapporteur related to education at a global level on a report related to comprehensive sector education. On that report, we carried out a very interesting study of the relationship between the right to CSE, to the right to health, to the right to education itself, and to the right to life in the end. So I would like to call your attention on that instrument because I think it's very important to have in mind all the different uh, progresses made internationally. Commissioner Azemena was uh, focusing on a very important Thing, which is the assessment of the procedures and the educational strategies. Is this uh, being addressed? Is this being taken into account? And uh, will this uh, lead to a diagnosis? And finally, are there any mechanisms in which girls, through which girls can denounce or present a complaint against their teachers when they commit any sexual violence towards them. Are there any phone lines, hotlines that they can have access to? Thank you. Thank you, Rapporteur. I give the floor to the civil society for 12 minutes. Thank you very much for your questions. I would like to start by answering um, in a very general way all of what you have been asking. 
first we have to come to this here and to uh, see that there are any mechanisms or plans on the part of the state related to sexual education. There is no real clear mechanism of information that actually works over time in relation with adolescents and young girls in Ecuador. This is a fact. It does not work. If it does exist, exist it's not being implemented properly. We have to be centered in those mechanisms. We have to be heard, which because we are the subjects of law for whom you are thinking these types of policies. So we call on the state to uh, leave words and to go strictly straight into action and to have us participate directly as civil society. And this has to be maintained over time because uh, carrying out a procedure with 1,000 adolescents once, it's fine, but it has to be maintained over time and it has to have an impact on our lives. You have to see it every day, not only in one sexual education class, but it has to be implemented in the whole uh, school curricula. So uh, in relation with the cost that this has for us, I think uh, we have the absence of many of our friends, of our sisters who are um, uh, taking care of children of their own rapists or who are dead or who are going through uh, different processes to survive gender-based violence, which could have been avoided if we had had free uh, and appropriate information. We have been denied information for so long and also the same state who is saying that they are creating these policies related to comprehensive sex education has just uh, issued a veto to this abortion law. So they have put our lives, our rights at risk. They have imposed uh, different time periods, uh, deadlines, which are very short and which leave girls and adolescents aside because we uh, take so much more time to recognize our pregnancies. This is the minimum reparation that we are due. So it's obvious the in connection, the lack of connection between the reality and sexual education. We don't see this reflected on our lives. It's been, it's reflected on this veto actually, which asks for very cruel requirements to be able to access a right, which is the right to an abortion after a violation of rape. They have um, removed the informed consent of girls. They have put this in the hands of their legal guardians. And many times, more than 80% of the times, these guardians are their own rapists. And also they ask as requirements to have an ombudsman representative present, a special uh, doctor and a social worker to provide authorization. We need to be to certify that we have been raped. We need to uh, recognize this in a very short time. And also they decide on our behalf. So this has a very high, high cost in our, on our lives. This has meant the death of many of us. So it puts an end to the project of life of many of us. This is torture being uh, carried out by the state. So we call on leaving this course behind because this has a very real cost in our lives. Good afternoon once again. I would like to answer. I'd like to tell you that since we were told that we were going to participate in this hearing, I told my mother, my father, I was thrilled to be here, but I didn't say this to many persons because probably they were going to say this girl is too young to speak about sexuality or maybe her mind and she wants to speak about sexuality. She's talking about things that uh, should be left to the adults and she has lost her virginity. And 
I could like to uh, answer Commissioner Julissa. That's the cost of being in this space. And I feel I am a privileged adolescent by being here because since a very young age, I knew about the CSE. If you ask my, uh, my friends what CSE is, they don't know what that is. And uh, I'm glad that the representatives are here because we believe that the state has a historical debt with us and it has to do with the fulfillment of our rights. I, when I was young, I never received comprehensive sexual education. And when I started talking about this topic, it was because I found it online or I saw it uh, on TV and I saw that when they discussed the period on TV, they didn't want to use the color red, but color blue. So I had had the opportunity to receive further information about comprehensive sexual education. We don't want CSE to be just part of a program, but a topic that is discussed all the time in every education uh, institution. When I was young, I had never heard about this. And my mother told me the other day that my aunts had heard that uh, my cousin was taught about sexual education, but they were explaining to him that he had a hose that they put in a hole instead of using the appropriate terminology. We need information to know whether we are facing danger and we, in order to make sure our rights are respected. It's, it's a great opportunity to be here with many civil society organizations, but it's certain and necessary for more persons and identities to be part of this struggle. And as a collective, we wrote a letter listing our demands in connection with comprehensive sexual education and with the fulfillment of our rights. We will send that letter to you after this hearing. And in order to conclude, I would like to thank, to thank Mrs. Petita because you are a symbol of a uh, fight for to me and to all my friends. And I would like your history, not the story not to be repeated again. I would like to request the commission not to forget about us. And I would like to thank you for taking responsibility for our remands. Good afternoon. I just wanted to say what Tamia mentioned about the veto beyond the requirements against the lives of girls and women. We need to say that that veto goes against the relation of the state and the church. This is signed, take into account the religious and personal position of the president. These requirements such as uh, filing a demand and other requirements that is related to hindering our right to decide. CSE and abortion are related because in this way, if they this continues all the information we receive through the media and at school that goes against uh, our principles we should mention secularity as tanya and my colleagues can said these measures should be transversal sexual education we receive throughout our lives was awful. It was religious. It was inexistent in many cases. And we can give testimony of that. And not only the fact that the CSC wants, uh, is about to be eliminated, but guilt 
also re-victimizes us when we are raped, when we are forced to into maternity, or when we have to face this presidential decrease that causes our death. Hello, I would like to thank the question asked by the commissioner. You raised an important uh, issue. Noel already mentioned that. To me, it is an honor to be here sharing what we live every day so that you can listen to our demands and having a space in which we are taking into account where we can make a presentation and give a statement. And uh, as an Afro adolescent, when I go to any space of participation, I see many girls and there's diversity, but there are, there are many Afro Ecuadorians and this makes it visible that to many of us, access in our rights is harder. The question that you posed, what is my vision as an Afro adolescent from Ecuador, I consider that education, comprehensive sexual education should be universal. Do you hear me? I having some trouble with my internet connection. I'm going to turn my camera off. Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. I was saying that it should be universal. I study in a big city. I may have access, but I do not have it. I cannot imagine what it's like for teenagers in rural areas, in territories that are far from big cities, and they leave these violations. And there are too many taboos around sexuality. So I invite and urge the state to take education to each corner of the country so we can access this in a scientific verified way so we have free access to our sexuality because that's a right because we deserve it and this good help eradicate all violations of our rights thank you then I will give the floor to the representatives of the state for 12 minutes. Thank you for your contributions, your inputs, for your questions. I'm going to answer them in a global and general manner, taking into account the time available. In connection with the participation of girls, boys, and adolescents in these topics related to uh, comprehensive sexual education, there are a series of strategies that have been developed and others that are about to be implemented. In connection to the participative mechanism, we could say that there are two figures more than a hundred thousand that more than eleven thousand students participated that's how this methodology works and at the same time regarding the sexual the, the subjects for sexual education we are in an initial stage of implementation in 2021 along with training of professors we have provided training to students at the national level. We are also planning within the national strategy that was mentioned before, in which girls, boys, and adolescents will participate, the development of a tool to follow up the implementation of the subjects in the classroom process as part of the strategy that we have mentioned. And finally, the Ministry of Education 
regarding participation is currently developing organic law of cultural education that law was amended last year in that sense we will also incorporate a special part on sexual education to provide sustainability and nationwide students uh, students nationwide will participate it is important to highlight that comprehensive sexual education is based on consent how to deal with it, how to establish and promote it, and how to respect and guarantee that since childhood. It is important to consider that beyond um, school dropouts that occurred during the pandemic due to cases of teenage pregnancy, this has other consequences in the national education system on the quality of the education as the caregiving uh, tasks are carried out by girls and adolescents. Regarding sexual violence cases, we carry out a systematic follow-up of each one of them since January 2014 until February 2022, we have registered 13,554 cases reported in the education system. The alleged uh, aggressor in most cases is within the national education system. So when that occurs, that information is referred to the uh, Gen Attorney General's office in order to implement immediate measures. For example, the dismissal of this professor from the institution and avoiding contact with other uh, boys and girls and adolescents. And this includes punishment since suspension to dismissal. This was a strengthen after the Paola Guzman Albarracín case you know, that allowed us to implement no deadline for filing complaints in these cases within the education system. We have also developed social, emotional um, attention for victims, whether their aggressor is within or without the education system, taking into account the diagnosis that let us take uh, these decisions. This can be addressed from a quantitative perspective. We have been monitoring cases since 2014, but there are a series of uh, researchers and figures developed at the national and international level. For example, the cost of teenage pregnancy for the state and the education system, which allows us to see the loss, the damage caused when a girl or adolescent becomes uh, a mother at an early age. All this information together with the documents regarding subjects we would like to send all this information to you so you can read it firsthand. Thank you. I will uh, provide a global answer, especially related to the competency of this state secretariat as an articulator and coordinator, not only of the execution of the precautionary measures, uh, merits reports, uh, informs of the inter-American system, but also as the guiding uh, entity regarding human rights in Ecuador. First of all, the mechanisms of uh, 
communication related to the civil society organizations are done regularly and the action is to prevent sexual violence in the educational sector as a consequence of the sentence of uh, the case Paola Guzman against Ecuador has been uh, carried out by the Council for Intergenerational Equality. However, it is important to highlight that we have received a, uh, an application or a request during the last weeks to consider the, a new consultation or a new referendum with the Coalición de Niñas y Mujeres por Nuestras Voces. And we are analyzing this request and will surely accept it. That is the commitment of the states is to have the structure of the public policies to be extended and to receive feedback. This will allow us as a state to see that these actions that the adolescents and the organizations of civil society has, have mentioned could can be mainstreamed or integrated in the system of public policies. Also, let me uh, inform you that this Secretariat is also in charge to prevent and eradicate the violence against women and gender-based violence, which allows us to share with you that for the first time in the history of Ecuador, we have a budget allocated to prevent uh, this violence, and this has been uh, increased by in four times. We have $6 million as an investment to um, used to prevent gender-based violence all throughout Ecuador. We have $24 million approved until 2025. This help to carry out processes to eradicate gender-based violence also entails a pilot study that may allow allows us to work in a cost-cutting way in relation to higher education careers related to different procedures through which the future uh, teachers are trained so that the people who are studying at a universities, especially in a single, in a specific public university can have these strategies and these processes are their availability. This is also supported by an organization, a non-governmental uh, organization, which is called CARE. It's also important to mention that as regards the inclusion of human mobility in our work, our secretariat has a human mobility approach being implemented and the processes to denounce uh, actions against children and adolescents has a human mobility approach. So all people who uh, come into the country uh, as migrants also benefit and will benefit of public policies carried out by this state. Finally, to conclude this intervention, we guarantee our commitment, the commitment of the state and the Secretariat of Human Rights to listen to uh, the stakeholders. We believe, and me personally as a as a secretary of human rights, that this space is that the Commission on Human Rights have provided to us and the presence of all commissioners here who have uh, invited us here are spaces to listen to one another. As state representatives, we uh, salute this initiative because we believe that by listening to the beneficiaries, to the adolescents, the organizations of civil society, we can improve 
this work in the face of this such a complex task to prevent and eradicate sexual violence in classrooms. So this is our commitment, Madam President, and thank you. Thank you very much. We are concluding with this hearing and also here um, concluding with this period of sessions. So this hearing is especially symbolic. I want to thank the representatives of the state uh, ambassador, as we uh, said before, our best wishes to you, our thanks for your seriousness in working with us. And also, uh, this is such an opportunity for you the state representatives you have in your hands the possibility to change the lives of human of ecuadorian children and adolescents we trust that you will take advantage of this opportunity and now i address the civil society organizations i am very moved and i think my commissioners colleague commissioners also i uh, took down some notes and you said you have I have the right to be happy uh, Claudia said we are not hysterical we are his, um, historical you said also that your decisions must be respected and you also and uh, said Noelia said that we don't the please don't forget them I want to tell you that it's impossible to forget to for, to forget you because you are the children's the girls that we were, the, the, the girls that were not able to access these spaces. Look at the commission. Look at the commissioners. This is not, a ch uh, this is not by chance. The, we have the uh, special rapporteur, the undersecretary who are all, who have been here for 20 years. These are all women. This is the space that we, save for you what you are doing right now is history it's history for all children for all girls of ecuador and also for all girls of the region it's such a privilege it's such a brave action i think this is the best way to close this peer of session with hope placed on the new generations you are speaking on behalf of the girls that cannot speak anymore for paola and many other girls who cannot speak and also for adult women that cannot speak at the time. And let me conclude by uh, telling you a short story. The Inter-American Commission has a very large team and I wanted to mention a specific team, the uh, section of um, technology and systems, which is um, led by Doris Lamas, Geisha, and many other women are part of that. A team and they are historical as well because this is a single team all comprised of women and this is also hope for you so i want to conclude by deeply thanking all of you all of the persons who are uh, making this uh, this moment uh, possible camila kosh luciana bacotti vanessa anfite catal paula michelena gloria hansen each and every single woman who is working here and who have been girls such as you. So I conclude by, by deeply thanking you. And I repeat, we cannot forget you because that would mean that we would forget ourselves. We are still working hand in hand and the Inter-American Commission extends this friendly hand to you. And I want to um, end with this, with this song, which says, fear was sold and wings grew so i want for you that these wings grow on you and the commitment on the commission continues to hear you to listen to you i conclude the, the period of sessions i conclude with this hearing um thank you i want to say to the ambassador that that a course for the students uh, of Ecuador, uh, for uh, magistrates on Ecuador. I, If you have that course, I will go to Ecuador and I will assist, I will, I will attend. I, I take your words, uh, Commissioner.